All right, what is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the grill, guys. Before we do any of the normal intros, let's just appreciate some stuff real quick. Look at the colors. Look at the colors. I wish the lighting was better right now. Oh, there we go. Phone adjust. Focus. Enhance. Enhance. Dude, it's a beautiful thing, man. It is a beautiful thing. Woo, man. Okay, okay, okay. So, back to it. So, as you guys know, we're doing our more expensive Mars Hydro versus our more affordable lighting. I'm sorry, I said that backwards again like last time. More affordable Mars Hydro, more expensive Mammoth. You all know I love Mammoth lighting. Can't wait to run their mint white series with the Evo, new Evo, Samsung Evo diodes in it, meant for plants specifically. Love them, but I also have nothing bad to say about Mars Hydro. Look at this, look at this. This, this thing, this is from a 300 watt. It is putting in work. So far, the only negative I can say about this, and I mentioned this to you guys a few times before, is it does produce more heat. The room is really cold right now, so it's not as big of a factor, but like I can touch this and I can feel heat. I don't. It dissipates heat so well, this doesn't. I don't know if it's the, it's gotta be the diodes, right? I would assume it's the, it's the actual LED diodes themselves, unless it's the material this is made of, the heat sinks, Maybe because this has more heat sinks, it just has more contact to air, dissipates. But these are like deeper ones. I don't know, man, I don't know. I'm not an engineer, I don't design lights. But that's my biggest pet peeve, is the heat on these, and that makes me concerned that I'm losing some of my efficiency in the form of heat as well. So that's my only downside. Aside from that, love it, doing fantastic. Also, believe it or not, all of this purple, orange, beautiful looking fall colors here, same exact plant as here, which only has a little bit of this going on right now. And I don't know what the lighting is right now, but it's, it's, if you could tell, that's purple and orange as well. Much more intense over here. And I'm like, man, Mars Hydro got something special in their light. And then I realized this vent was faced up straight into the side of this, blowing cold air into it. So I'm like, oh, that's why it just got more cold air. So as you can tell now it's faced down. I had this fan over here, blow it this way. Cause like, if you look over here, much more oranges and purples over here much less because all the air was hitting across the top and that side so that's what it is but also i have been running fade we cut out core so to give you guys a rundown you know, now that we've appreciated oh my god look at this dude it's just do a helicopter view it's just, okay 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 so where we are so far in the grow give you guys the updates so starting off Temperatures. Temperatures are, I think, a little bit different from last time. We have day temps at 68 degrees, night temps at 62, because that's as low as my AC allows me to set it. It actually gets about 60 in here, sometimes 59, just because it's cold outside at night. And since the lights aren't here to combat it, that's where it gets. I will be dropping that to as low as I can for the very last week, 62, since that's my lowest setting, day and night. I'm just gonna get him cold as shit. So that's my goal last week, but where I'm at right now, 68 day, 62 night, Humidity is based on those temps per the VPD chart. I always say that, I don't give humidity. I want you guys to check it, figure it out for yourselves because it's a crucial tool. And look at those big old donkey dicks over there flipped on over the colas. See them? I'll, fa I'll fold it over, man. Okay. So aside from that, uh, input EC was 3.5. We did stack the EC to about a nine or 10 in the media. Uh, was too much for this pheno, not that wild berry bites pheno back there. As you guys remember last time I had two phenos and I took clones and forgot to label them, which I'm notorious for doing. This is the one I didn't really want to do again because even though it purples up sooner, it can't handle the nutrients. Whereas if you see back there, no burn whatsoever back there. So I had to drop the nutrients down because it was the only, only plant out of all this that couldn't really handle it. And these ones just barely started to, you see a little bit. So I was like, all right, it's time. This one's getting it. These ones are starting to, time to drop that down. So what I did about four days ago, when I switched my tank from my bloom to core at a 70-30 ratio, 70% 70, 70 being bloom, 30% was core, I switched that to the bloom fade. Same ratio, 70-30. I did, I did a drought stress before that, so I let it dry right up until week seven was about to start, right? 
or just before week seven started. I let it dry. I think it took three and a half days before like this right here started getting down to like right here, right? You don't want it wilted. You just want it to like start, like almost like it wants to start wilting and you just see these, these kind of droop just a little bit. That's enough, because you don't want to wilt the plant, right? You don't want to damage the plant, you want to stress the plant, and you do this in the later half of flower because that's when you want to stress it. You don't want to stress it when it's going through its growth. And for me, this is now the later part of the flower because as you guys know, I've been running that 10, 14 light cycle, only 10 hours of light, and it has been speeding things up. We are much, we're just in week seven, and look how like brown hairs, right? It looks more complete. We're getting fading already. I mean this because the temps, but also because the you know the uh, the you know expedited uh, flowering time because of the increased dark period. In addition to now the last four days or last three days having that fade in there. Once I did the drought test, I mixed up 50 gallons, ran 20 gallons of fade bloom mix over the course of about an hour and a half. So slowly ran it through it to just really leach out the core that was in there drop that nine you know that roughly that nine media ec get that down i don't know what it is but i because i didn't check the runoff unfortunately i kind of forgot but my goal is to get that down to about five or six ish right and then i'll you know try to bring that down and keep it around about a five so i know it's lower because i ran a lot of water through it and i ran it at a three so i dropped my input ec from a 3.5 which is what i have been running for basically all the flower now we're at a three ec with the fade and the in the bloom i did that because it, it makes it easier to drop the media ec if i'm inputting less obviously and then increase runoff you know helps drop that media ec which is what my goal was i'm going to run that three ec until the end i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to run three ec of uh, the fade bloom right to the very end i'm i'm considering you guys let me know if you if you don't want to see this i've never ran my lights and my ppms for my co2 right to right to harvest right i usually taper down the last week or two so I'm thinking about not doing that at all and running it right to the very end. Maybe I'll taper when I do a, a flush. I'm gonna do a two to three day flush because I'm not tapering my nutrients down. So that's when you have to flush, right? If you taper nutrients, flushing isn't really required because you've kind of slowly done that. But you need to get a healthy root zone. You gotta avoid salt toxicity, all that good stuff, right? Which is why I'm already starting to bring my media EC a little bit lower, right? Get in that healthy range. So I'm not, I'm not gonna, uh, drop uh, you know taper down my EC so when I get to the last two three days I'm gonna flush maybe I'll drop my lights then because I won't have the nutrients to support the kind of PPFD that it's getting right now which is like 1600 1500 up here 1300 around here about 1300 around there maybe 900 a thousand there over here I've tested it because the lights are only in these four so it's less spread out which is another thing I, I don't like as much about the Mars Hydro and I, I, I always forget is it needs more bars. I know this is only a 300, but still, one more bar would have been nice because it gets, it, it's crazy. It'll be like 2000 PPFD in some spots and then it'll be like 800, it's wild. But I mean, you can't complain. I mean, this thing is doing work, really great. So like, if, if you ain't got a lot of money to spend, without a doubt, Mars Hydro, right? If you got the money to spend and you just want that little bit of better, right? You want that little bit better, better efficiency, better heat sinks, you know, a little bit better light spread, Mammoth and obviously they got that new uh, you know for me mammoth for you It could be another brand. So there's lots of great brands that do cost more This is just you know the one that I've tried and really really have enjoyed uh, So, you know, I fanboy over them a little bit Which by the way discount code guys. I don't get kickbacks on this someone told me I must be getting money I don't I just ask hey, can I have a discount code? I can give to people if they like it as well and so if you guys want, you know, the free shipping saves you anywhere from like 65 to $300, depending on shipping to your area. It works in all countries. Feel free to use it. It's try hyphen state. I'll pop it up. I'll pop I'll put it down in the description as well. If you guys copy and paste it, feel free to use it, whatever it is. Maybe one, maybe one day they will, they will sponsor me and give me that, that mint white, you know what I mean? Help your boy out. But until then, it's just to help you guys out. Okay, back to it. Uh, so I might drop the PPFT those last three days just because the nutrient won't be there to help. Uh, other than that, I'm thinking I'm gonna, run, I'm gonna run it out right to the very end. I'd never really do that, just to see if there's a difference. Eek out that last bit of growth. Eek out that last bit of like uh, everything, right? And because I'm dropping the temp so low, I'm not really, I don't think I'm gonna be as worried about de degradation, degradation or volatility of the terpenes. Temperature is gonna be a huge factor of that. Light does degrade terpenes as well, but light also grows terpenes. So it's kind of like, does it degrade faster than it grows kind of thing with the lighting? And that's, so for the most part, as they're growing, 
it's it does outpace it. You definitely grow more than it than it you know than it makes volatile or degrades with lighting. But at the very very end, I don't know if that holds true. But it's only a couple days, so who really cares, right? I mean, you can't make that big of a difference. And the whole last week, I'm going to have super cold temps. I think I'll be good. So that's just my thought process behind why I'm doing what I'm doing, just to key you guys in. As far as my watering schedule, I know some of you ask about that. It has changed slightly. I don't, I was before, I was telling you guys, I did four, four feedings basically, you know, to kind of saturate for like an hour. And then once my media was saturated, I let it ride and then it would start to dry. And then maybe in the afternoon, we'll get one feeding. It's too cold in here. Uh, the plants aren't drinking up as much as they used to. Uh, so right now I saturate for the first hour basically, and then just let it ride out. Since I did the flush with the fade and bloom, I actually flushed it out. Uh, let me see, today's day three. Yesterday I didn't water, so the day before that I flushed it out with fade and bloom. Instantly saw like the coloring on the lowers start to kick in, not just the uppers. So it was really cool to see almost an instant effect with that huge you know, flush that I did. I didn't need to water it yesterday, and then I had to water it today. So right now we're on every other day watering, it's so cold. I'm sure that'll pick back up to everyday watering. I think it was just because of the drought stress that I did, but we'll see, I'll keep you guys you know, coined in on that as well. But right now I'm just building up the first hour, doing nothing after that, and then you know, the next day, seeing where my moisture is, using this little doodad here. I watered it this morning, it's only at 47. 50% is basically fill capacity. If the whole thing's above that, that's when I start seeing a little bit of runoff, right? Because it'll say 63 on here, but I'll see a little bit of runoff within like 10 minutes. It's like 51, 52, 50, somewhere around there. That's basically fill capacity, it's running off. So I usually won't water or feed again until this meter right here tells me that it's below, it's like 38%, 36%, you know, somewhere in the, the mid 30s, right? 38 is still kind of high for me sometimes, but that's like my top end. If it's 39, I won't feed. Like it, I, I prefer it to be 36, 35, 34, somewhere around there. And that's just for this specific meter on here, just because I used it all last grow and I didn't even, uh, all last run, and I didn't even really go by this at all, but it gave me kind of a reference point and I got used to using it that run. So this run, I, I almost know where it's at because I have that whole run to back it up and now it's kind of useful. So funny the way that works. I knocked it before, but now I'm using it a little bit, but I can also see how wet the tops are. And if I come in and they're saturated wet and I can pinch the bottom and it's just soaked, you need a little bit more dry back time in flower, right? You want a little bit more than when you do uh, for like generative growth, right? Your vegetative growth. You, you want this as, you know, flowering. You don't want the leaves and everything. You want the flowers. So you want a little bit more of a dry back, not by a lot, a little bit, an extra five, maybe 10%. That's about it, right? So when we say you need more, people go overboard with it. More or less could be small amounts of changes, and that's usually all it is, is small amounts of changes. But that's it, guys. I think I'm just rambling at this point. I gave the updates on my PPFD, where we're at, PPMs, EC input, where my feed's at, how I'm feeding. I think I covered everything. If there's any questions you guys want to know, if I haven't covered anything, feel free to ask me. I'm more than willing to share, and I'll cover a video on it if I need to. But until then, peace out, YouTube. And as always, happy growing, guys. Smoke weed for the rest of my life You can find me posted